start with Jesus every day. Moment by moment in work and play, I will start in life and starting out right. Starting with Jesus, it is a delight. Starting with Jesus, day and night. Starting with Jesus, I'm starting out right. Hello everyone, welcome to Starting With Jesus, where we want to encourage you to start everything you do with Jesus. Today our program is about, well, it's about a crowd of people who are very upset for a silly, silly reason. And I can't wait to find out what Miss Michelle has to say about that. But before we get to it, let's start with some singing. Hi friends, 
Now that we've gone through the way in the outer court, we can begin our journey in the truth here in the holy place. Now, the first thing you might see on the right when you go into the sanctuary would be this. This is called the table of showbread. Now, what's important about the table of showbread is it would have two stacks of bread side by side here in the holy place. Now, how many of you have ever been hungry before? I know I have. Why do you think God used bread as a symbol in his sanctuary? Well, if we don't eat very much or for a long time, will we, we be strong? No, we'll get weak and tired and we won't be able to grow. But the same is true with our spiritual lives. Jesus tells us that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And Jesus is called the bread of life. And so when we understand that when we come into the holy place, we're coming into a new walk with God, a new life with God. And the only way that we're gonna be able to be strong and healthy is if we eat God's holy bread, which is his word, the Bible. And the priests were to have this bread here every single day. But on Sabbath, they would make a new loaf and they would eat up all the bread from the previous week. It's kind of true like us. We need to have God's word fresh every single day. And then on Sabbath, we get a special dose of God's word as we worship him in going to church and worshiping him and studying the Bible. Now, when God told Moses to have bread in the holy place, it was because bread was a healthy food for them to eat. It would keep them strong. And God says in the Bible that bread makes a man's heart strong. And so God's word, if it's in our hearts, it'll keep us spiritually strong too. God tells us in Psalm 119 verse 11, that your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so it's so important to have God's word in our lives, in our minds every single day. So when we eat food, it goes into our tummy and it actually becomes part of our body. The same thing it is when we read God's word, it goes into our mind, it becomes part of who we are. So if we're taking in good things like the Bible and good music and happy thoughts that think about Jesus and being kind to other people, those are things that help us to be spiritually strong. But if we're putting bad things in our minds, like bad TV, or bad movies or bad video games, those are things that can make us weak and not strong spiritually. So we wanna make sure we're putting in all of the good things. I want to take in Jesus every day by reading his word and knowing his love as we see it in the Bible, don't you? Last time there was a big fire in Ephesus. I wonder what's gonna happen after the fire after those books burn, scrolls burned full of Satan magic. Hmm, I wonder what will happen. We'll find out today, right after we pray. Thank you, dear Jesus, for being here with us right now. Thank you for promising that you are always with us and you will give us the courage and strength to stay true to you. Send your spirit to be here now. In your name we pray, amen. As the smoke cleared from the big bonfire where 50,000 pieces of silver worth of scrolls were burned, big victory for God, wasn't it? We find that the people of Ephesus, who did burn those scrolls, started making some different choices. Let's have a little background though, a little history lesson on Ephesus. Ephesus, there was a special God in Ephesus and her name was Diana. In fact, they thought that she fell down from the sky and then they worshiped her instead of the one true God. Interesting, right? Anyway, there was a group of people who were called silversmiths. I call them idol makers because they made images idols of Diana of the Ephesians and then they would sell them for lots of money and then they would make lots of money. Now, isn't it cool that when we decide to follow Jesus, we just want to make different choices and Jesus will help us to make different and better choices, won't he? And that's what was happening in Ephesus. The people who had followed Jesus now, who wanted to get rid of their old way of doing things, they started making different choices and they were not buying those statues anymore because they weren't worshiping idols, they were worshiping God. And this made the silversmiths very upset because, you see, 
they were not making money like they used to. <laughs> in fact, there was a big celebration every year where they would celebrate Diana and it was not as big of a celebration this year. Mm. And Demetrius, he was like one of the leaders of the silversmiths. He started spreading dissent. He started spreading rumors. He started spreading lies and he started getting really angry and getting other people really angry at Paul and the Christians there. Cause he said, they are ruining our city. Diana is so important to us and to their pockets, right? Mm. But, and he got a whole crowd together and they started just having this big crowd mentality. I feel like sometimes when we get in a big group of people, we stop using our brain and we just do whatever everybody else is doing. I hope that hasn't happened to you, but be aware because when you're in a big group of people, make sure that you use your brain and that you listen to God's still small voice because these people were just shouting, great is Diana of the Ephesians, great is Diana of the Ephesians. And some of them didn't even know why they were shouting that. They were just there doing what everyone else was doing. And they were really upset because they wanted to find Paul and hurt him, right? But they couldn't find him anywhere. So they grabbed two of the Christians there. Um, their names were Aristoc Aristarchus and Gaius, and they grabbed them instead. Someone had warned Paul, you see, so he was not, he was um, somewhere else, right? Paul, though, he wanted to go talk to the crowd. He was like, no, I have to go help my friends. I have to tell them the truth about Jesus. And his friend said, no way, you're going out there. This is not a good time because the mob was building up. And we call it mob mentality when the mob just moves and it isn't use, they aren't using their brains. They're not thinking. They're just doing what everyone else is doing. And that's when Alexander the Jew got up. And he wanted to make an announcement. Now, he was a Jew. He wasn't a Jewish Christian. And he wanted to make sure that everyone knew that the Jews were not a part of this. This was just the Christians. They were the troublemakers. And people kind of listened to him, but they didn't really care about what he said. They just kept chanting. In fact, the Bible says that this mob chanted, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! For do you know how long? Not one hour, but two hours of just shouting and chanting. And they were just, they weren't thinking, were they? Or Maybe some of them were, but not all of them. It's pretty amazing. And we're going to pick up our Bible story in Acts chapter 19, verse 35, to find out what happens next. Acts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, the fifth book of the New Testament, 19, big 19, little 35, verse 35. The Bible says, they were just shouting, right? Raise the Diana of the Ephesians. And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that this city of the Ephesians is temple guardian of the great goddess Diana and of the image that fell down from Zeus? He's like, we all know this, like you're shouting and we already know what you're shouting. Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. He's like, calm down. We all know what you're shouting, right? It's interesting that God used someone. Was this person a Christian? No, he wasn't. He was one of the city officials and God used him to calm this crowd down. Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. Rashly means like quickly without thinking, which is exactly what was happening. For you have brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples or blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open. And there are proconsuls. Like, there's a right way to do this, folks, and you should really do it the right way, right? Let them bring charges against one another. And we do that today, right? In courts. People come, they get a lawyer, they defend themselves, it goes back and forth, and the judge or the jury, a group of people, citizens, make the decision who is right, who is wrong, right? And the person who's in the wrong then gets a consequence. But if you have any other iniquity to make, it shall, inquiry, sorry, let's rewind. But if you have any other inquiry, that means a question to make, shall it be, it shall be determined by a lawful assembly. He said, do it the right way, do it in court. For we are in danger of being called into question for today's uproar. And there be no reason which we may give to account for this disorderly gathering. He said, you guys are a mess out there. That's Miss Michelle's version, but disorderly gathering, right? What do you think happened? Did the crowd listen to him, to the city clerk? And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. He said, go home, everyone, go. And they listened. Chapter 20 continues that after the uproar had ceased, Paul called the disciples to himself, embraced them, and departed to Macedonia. God had saved his servant Paul using the city clerk and some sound counsel, isn't it? Very good counsel. He said, take it to court. Do it the right way. God had kept Paul safe. Then like the Bible says, Paul encouraged the Ephesians. He said, God's going to be with you, right? 
and then he said goodbye to Ephesus. He's on to more adventures, and he knows, and he knew the Bible verse that is our memory verse this week in Matthew 4, verse 10. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. I think the Ephesians learned an invaluable lesson about who they should serve, and the power of God was seen in today's story. I am so curious about what will happen next on the adventures um, that Paul has throughout the book of Acts. If you want to learn more about Paul's adventures throughout the week before our next episode, you'll want to check out our podcast. That's Seed Pod for Kids. And each day of the week, you will get a little part of what's coming next in our story. So please check that out. And until next time, start with Jesus by exploring his word. Hello again. Happy Sabbath. In this week's lesson, we learn how Paul stood faithful to God in his truth even when a whole city turned against him. Paul reminds me of an evergreen pine tree. These trees stay always green no matter if it's hot or very cold. We should be like the evergreen trees, always faithful to God no matter what. So today we're making a pine tree centerpiece. For today's craft, you need a pine cone, a round slice of wood, a lid or a plate, dark green paint, a paintbrush, cotton balls, and a glue gun. So the first thing you do is to paint the pine cone first and then let it dry. Once your pine cone is dry, we are going to start stretching our cotton balls uh, to put on the wood. Once you have a stretch two or three, depending on how much snow you want under the pine cone, we are going to glue it to the slice of wood we have here. Once you're done gluing the cotton balls, we're going to glue our pine cone or pine tree on the snow. With the remaining cotton balls, we're going to add a little bit of snow on our pine cone. So it looks like it got some snow on its branches too. And here is your centerpiece. I hope you have fun making it. See you next week. It's time now to review last week's questions to see what they were and if you got them right. It's question time for today's story, Staying True to God. I truly do love getting your answers in my inbox. So can you email them to me this week? My email is answers at startingwithjesus.com. That's answers at startingwithjesus.com. And here come your questions. Number one, question. Why were the silversmiths so angry? Why were the Ephesian silversmiths so angry? 
Number two, what did the Ephesians shout for two hours? What did the Ephesians shout for two hours? And number three, who did God use to protect Paul and the Christians and to dismiss the crowd? Who did God use to protect Paul and to dismiss the crowd? I can't wait to get that email from you. You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall serve. Matthew 4.10 Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. Matthew 4.10 Bye, happy Sabbath! You shall worship the Lord your God, and in Him only you shall serve. Matthew 14. Bye. Happy Sabbath. You shall worship. You shall worship the Lord your God. The Lord your God. And Him only. And Him only. You shall serve. You shall serve. Matthew 4:10. My favorite 10. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Mark 2. 4. 10. You shall worship. To the Lord your God, and in only you shall serve Bobby Sabbath for the Vito Sata. You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall serve. Matthew 4, verse 10. Bye, happy Sabbath. See you next week. Keep in touch. You shall yeah. worship the Lord, the Lord, Lord, your God, your God, and Him, and Him only. You shall. So you shall yeah. worship uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter four. That bit all first ten. It then. Good job. Bye. Happy Sabbath. From Colorado. Bye. Matthew 4 verse 10. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Canada. You shall worship, worship the Lord your God. God. Worship the Lord your God, and him. Yeah. Only you shall serve. You shall worship the Lord your God. Worship the Lord your God and Him. Only you shall serve. Matthew 4, verse 2. But I have Sabbath from Candace. Bye, Candia. You shall worship the Lord your God. In Him only you shall serve. Matthew 4, 10. Bye, happy Sabbath. You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall serve. Matthew 4, 10. Bye, happy Sabbath. You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall serve. Matthew 4, 10. Bye, happy Sabbath from Indianapolis. See you next week. You can hear Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, And Him only shall thou serve, And Him only shall thou serve. Matthew 4, verse 10. Worship the Lord your God and Him only you shall serve. Matthew 4 10. You shall worship the Lord your God and Him only you shall serve. Matthew 4 10. Bye, happy Sabbath. See you next week. Bye, happy Sabbath. See you next week. You shall worship the Lord your God. Worship the Lord your God and Him only you shall serve. Worship the Lord your God. Worship the Lord your God. And hey, all you shall serve. Matthew 4, verse 10. Bye, happy Sabbath from Chad, Africa. You shall worship the Lord your God. Worship the Lord your God. And hey, all you shall serve. Yes, I worship.
hasta llegar. Voy a hasta llegar. Worship the Lord your God, worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall serve. You shall worship the Lord your God, worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall serve. Matthew 4 verse 10. Goodbye, happy Sabbath from church. worship your God and him only you you shall save Matthew 4 10 by fifth happy summer see you next week bye Kathy bye bye you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve Matthew 4.10. Bye, friends. Happy Sabbath. See you next week from Washington State. Worshiping God is something we really enjoy doing. One time, a special time of the week that we worship God is on Sabbath when we go to church. We're going to make a worship bag today to help us bring all the things that we bring to worship. We're going to start by turning the t-shirt inside out. Then, we're going to cut off the bottom. You can see how it's stitched. We're going to cut that part off. Now we have a circle. This will be the strap for our bag to put over your arm. Now we're going to go up to the top of the shirt and lay it flat towards us. Now we're going to cut up here. We want to cut a little distance and make a U around the top. The bigger your U and the bigger the t-shirt, the bigger the bag that you'll be making. Okay, we're not going to need the rest of this t-shirt but we have something that kind of looks like this now. Now, this is going to be a tie bag, so we need to cut strips. So I'm gonna start here, start cutting strips in. Now that we have these cut shags on three sides, it's time to start tying. We'll take the two pieces that are next to each other, tie them in a knot, and then go on to the next one. Okay, we have it single knotted around. Now it's time for us to use the circle strap that we cut out earlier. Now we're gonna start doing a second knot. We'll put our circle strap in and we'll take our two pieces that we just knotted and tie them again to kind of hold that strap in place and do all of them again. All done tying. You can see that our circle is connected now for an arm strap. 
Now we're going to take our shirt and turn it back right side out. So we have a little back. Now we have some fabric paint, so we're going to do some decorating of our back. Once you've finished decorating your bag, you'll need to let it dry. But this is a great bag to bring to worship, to worship service. You can put in a Bible, so you can look up the verses when the pastor or the speaker up front tells you a verse to look up. You can put in a journal, so you can take notes or draw pictures about the things that you're hearing, and a pencil for taking those notes and drawing those pictures. We also like to collect some change or money throughout the week, and you can put that in your worship bag too, so that you can give money during offering time. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come to me and forbid them not. Jesus wants you at church. He wants you to participate in worship with him. I hope that you put together a bag, even if you don't make your own, a bag of things that you can bring next time so you can participate in worship. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad you were here. Our story today was about a big crowd of people who were yelling and shouting and most of them didn't know why. <laughs> you know, that's kind of a silly reason to be yelling and shouting because everybody else is yelling and shouting. And that's kind of what was happening. I can guarantee that most of the people in that crowd that day didn't really know why they were yelling and shouting. They just heard other people doing it and so they started to do it. And that's kind of um, not a very smart reason to start doing something, is it? I've seen this happen before though. You know, when there's a big crowd of people, a lot of people start to, if one start person starts doing things and then two start people start doing things, three people start doing it, it starts catching on and everybody, eventually, most of the people start to do it for no good reason. We saw this happen when we were listening to the story or we heard this happen when we were listening to the story of Jesus' death, right? The whole crowd starts calling for Jesus' death for him to be crucified. Some of these people I'm sure didn't even know who Jesus was and they just started yelling things because everybody else was yelling it. It's pretty sad, isn't it? We don't want to be doing that. We don't want to follow the crowd just because the crowd is doing something, right? We want to be careful that we understand what we're saying. We want to be careful that we know what is true before we say something, right? And the way we can do that is by studying our Bibles and asking Jesus to help us to do what is right because it is right and not just because everybody else is doing it or to do things because we know they're right things and not to do things because everybody else is doing it, right? We want to be careful that whatever we do, we're doing because Jesus has asked us to do it and know what we believe because he can help us with that. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your wonderfulness. Thank you that you love us. Help us to do what is right because it is right. Not just because everybody else is doing it or just because everybody else is doing something. Help us to do what you have asked us to do and help us to know what that is. Help us to study our Bibles every single day. Help us to ask you to guide us every single day. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you in your wonderful name, in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for watching. Have a blessed week and keep in touch.